der Hessa. Desire for Survival. There is a first chapter, it could almost be a prologue, in the history of the Dehesa, the miracle of adaptation of its basic tree species, the home oak and cork oak, the greatest species of southwestern Europe. Trees of a medium size, compact, and which live a long time, evergreens. Their history is vast. They emerged more than 10 million years ago, around the middle of the tertiary period, when the climate was temperate and humid. They survived the ice ages of the Quaternary and currently thrive under a different climate. The Mediterranean climate, with long and arid periods, little rain that can, at times, be torrential and very extreme temperature changes. Its very survival is the second miracle of the Dehesa. For millennia and up to the last centuries, we humans here have not destroyed. We have not exterminated wildlife. We've adapted, we've tamed and planted, we've renewed our assets, and we've created the possibility of having a balance with the ecosystem. Throughout history, the primitive Mediterranean forest with all its dense shrub-like understory gradually yielded to man. This yielding to man caused the creation of this landscape. It was the beginning of a dynamic that continues in existence today. First with fire, then with plowing, the thicket was gradually cleared. The understory was gradually turned into land for pastures and crops. And the people learned how to sculpt the trees through shape pruning, so as to increase fruit production and to give the treetops a specific form, allowing the thick shadow cast to protect pastures, flocks and crops. In the vast majority of the southwest Iberian Peninsula, human beings kept and planted the Quercus rotundifolio oak species more than any other, a species which still dominates in this day and age and whose acorn is sweet and edible. From the Neolithic to proto-history, hand mills tirelessly turn this fruit into flour. Those first few millennia in the history of the Dehesa laid the groundwork for the landscape of megalithic monuments and left us with the earliest depictions of this iconic fruit. the uniqueness of this impressive natural habitat, which extends over more than three and a half million hectares and is mainly concentrated in the southwest of the Iberian Peninsula. Two-thirds of this surface are located in Spain, 
where it is called Dehesa, and a third corresponds to Portugal, where their name is Montado. Generally speaking, the Hessas occupy land with gentle contours, where agriculture is not so productive, atop substrates with little organic material. Throughout time and all over its surface area, the Dehesa has never been a static system. Instead, it has always been diverse in terms of trees, species and the crops that can be found therein. Patches of Mediterranean forest remain where the topography and the rocky outcrops have made it difficult to farm, or where thickets have been kept for game reserves. When abandoned, the space that is the Dehesa tends to recover its original appearance, although sometimes its diversity goes down and rock rose and broom bushes reappear more than any other species. The presence of a certain amount of scrub in between the cleared areas is frequent and necessary, as it allows for the natural regeneration of the trees, protecting the new roots from the cattle's mouths and hooves. In places where the dehesa is sparser, the trees are scattered, large in size, and are generally the same age. They are condemned to growing old without reproducing. After this fossilization phase, if there is no renewal, the dehesa will totally disappear. Territory's economic progress relies on the prosperity of the Dehesa. Livestock farming has shaped and kept this landscape, and it is the Dehesa's main use. This is livestock farming under the extensive farming scheme, with the benefits brought about in terms of animal health and conserving the ecosystem and its resources. An ecosystem that combines several types of livestock. An example of a unique form of livestock production, like none other in all the world, is that of the Iberian pig. Animals who freely roam the farms to feed during the Montañera months, October to February, when the pigs are fattened. This is the time when the home oak and cork oak gradually drop their acorns. The appearance of African swine fever in the 1960s was a hard setback for this livestock population, which was completely lost in Portugal. In Spain, it rebounded strongly and is tied to the meat processing industry, mainly to the drying industry, in which the highly sought hams, cuts of pork and other Iberian cold cuts are cured. Historically, the acorn-fed Iberian pig was combined with flocks of merino sheep for meat and wool. For centuries, sheep were the main players in transhumance, and the value of wool during the Middle Ages and the first centuries of the early modern period was one of the factors that acted as a catalyst for the conversion of dehesas. A fall in the price of wool led to the breeding of cattle, which in the past had only been used for work. Today, cattle breeding is experiencing a notable increase, with native breeds being crossed with others that are better for meat production. Goats, whilst scarce, complete this picture. 
Goats adapt to free grazing and also feed on scrub, contributing to the conservation of the dehesa. Sheep and goats support the dairy industry, an industry noted for its production of cheese. The present and the future of the Dehesa are in the hands of the farmers. Its survival rests in their hands. They must manage the Dehesa in a careful way so as to conserve it well, but their management also needs to be profitable. Additionally, the Dehesa features highly sustainable logging and forestry development efforts. Pruning, in addition to increasing the production of acorns, provides wood and charcoal. The traditional pecan charcoal is of great quality. Only in the summer, when the temperatures are higher, can cork, the outer bark of the cork tree, be extracted. It is impregnated with a substance called suberin, which gives it its unique insulating ability. Cork harvesting is a profession of both strength and delicacy that is resistant to mechanization, as only the skill of the individual harvesting the cork can ensure that the tree is not harmed. This treasured bark spontaneously regenerates in a period of between 9 and 14 years. The cork industry stands out because of its excellent rate of job creation. Likewise, it is non-polluting and its waste is recyclable. The Dehesa traditionally supported rain-fed crops, grains and legumes. These are currently in decline as today its agricultural facet is generally complementary to its livestock farming use, with the planting of fodder crops. These crops are basic for raising livestock under the extensive farming scheme, as they supplement the animal's food in the summer when the grass is dry. On the whole, the Dehesa represents a diversified and rich production cycle, capable of having its three aspects coexist in harmony. However, the tendency of community agricultural policy to consider the Dehesa exclusively as a pasture poses a threat to the regeneration and conservation of its trees, which are linked to a variety of uses. In this anthropogenic landscape, 
Human activity coexists with the ecosystem, which serves as home for beautiful and valuable flora and fauna. In Spain, the Dehesa accounts for about 33% of the Natura 2000 network, whose policies protect the majority of the species that live in this ecosystem. diversity of plants, especially annual herbaceous plants, reaches values comparable with those of the most varied habitats in the world. This fact is due to the mix of species adapted to open environments of varying terrain and forest species linked with the shade of the scattered trees. In the spring, the dehesa bursts into a flowering splendor and this is the time when the beekeepers collect the best honey. of the home oak and cork oak foliage is livened up by the long catkins draping down. The understory is brightened up by the constellations of white, starry rock rose corollas, the rich purple tones of the Spanish lavender, and the fruity leaves of the hawthorn. The sophisticated forms of small Mediterranean orchids shine through, precious botanical jewels whose tubers bear the summer months in hiding, only to come to life again in the winter. Likewise, the buds of another treasured plant of the Dehesa are open, the wild peony with its spectacular rose pink flowers. The dehesa includes a great variety of invertebrates, which are essential in the food chain, as well as amphibians and reptiles. as threatened as the Iberian lynx could recover if their habitat is respected and they manage to coexist with human beings. In the waterways, there are interesting populations of otters that prey upon the fish native to these rivers, which feature low water levels. The Spanish minnow carp, Squalius albanoides, the boga, the common barbel, etc. The extensive network of ponds, small bodies of water traditionally excavated for livestock watering, creates a specific habitat used by wading and water birds.
the endangered black stalk with its splendid plumage also sporadically takes advantage of these environments. From the moment that the first cold snap hits, the dehesa receives flocks of the common crane, as it is this species' place for wintering, with the animal feeding on acorns. of passerins and smaller birds of prey, and unique features can also be seen, such as the still flight of the exotic black-wing kite. The sky and the grounds of the Dehesa, home to the species they prey on, are no stranger to large birds of prey, eagles that are symbolic of the Iberian Peninsula, such as the Bonelli's eagle, the royal eagle, or the imperial eagle. Of these birds, noteworthy is the black vulture, which, along with the Egyptian vulture and griffon vulture, lands amongst its cogenus to find food. The attractiveness of this biodiversity, coupled with a rich ethnographic and artistic heritage, which has been passed down over the centuries, brings about new types of use and becomes a source of opportunities for tourism and recreation in constant contact with nature. The growing number of bird watchers is something that is becoming to become both common and profitable for the areas of the Dehesa. That is why this ecosystem must be defended, because of its intrinsic value and economic value. It suffers from terrible pests and diseases such as La Seca, the oak decline, but the greatest danger lies in the misuse of its resources. The abandonment of traditional sustainable management with poorly designed livestock policies that give incentives to increased livestock load, as well as a hindrance to rotation cropping, have led to improper exploitation, preventing the natural regeneration of the woodland, which has increasingly fewer trees and is becoming older as a result of overgrazing. A deterioration that, fortunately, is still reversible. The Dehesa as a desire. In first place, as a desire for survival of all the living beings that coexist in it. The Dehesa as a desire. In second place, as a desire of the human beings who depend on it. Lastly, the Dehesa is a promise of sustainability, a reserve of natural wealth, of a mass of forest to tackle climate change, of clean air, of pure water, of fertile soil to support biodiversity.
and, in turn, of our own existence. <laughs>